Hello, I'm Jeremy Fry. I am the senior pastor here at Advent Lutheran Church. I want to thank you for taking the time to participate in the following worship recording. Our mission here at Advent is to be the followers of Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. For us, that means connecting people to God and connecting people to people. We serve and love our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we go out and we serve and love each other with the same love that God has for us. Everyone who walks through the doors of Advent and participates with us needs to know that they are a child of God, wonderfully and beautifully made in God's image. No matter your race, your gender, your sexual orientation or identity, your social economical status, no matter where you, where you come from and who you are, you are loved by God and you are welcome to come and participate in worship and leadership in any of our ministries. Our ministries happen because of the generosity of our people. If you would like any more information about the ministries here at Advent Lutheran Church, how you would like to get involved, or information on how to give to these ministries, please visit our website, adventbrevard.org. Thank you, and God bless. The Gospel according to John. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. It's the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. That's our sermon title for the day. You can tell I'm a, I'm a great mathematician. Division by the empty set is less than the union of God's eternal love. In emoji. There you go. All right. Amen. <laughs> division, division, division. Um, Christ came to heal divisions in the world, specifically the, the division between humankind and God, all the way back to sin in the garden. And division in the world hasn't stopped. But the division between us and God has been reconciled through Jesus Christ. Now, Josh brought up the world earlier and in the spot, and this is John 17, 1 through 11, says, now I pray for the, for, um, for the people, but I do not pray for the world. 
in John, what he's referring to there, what, the, what John is writing about. See, this is after the, the temple was destroyed uh, when John was the, of the four um, canonical gospels. John was written, we believe, last. It's a little different from the other ones. But the world, the Greek cosmos, is not the way we think of cosmos, right? The, the, uh, the universe and the sky. He's talking about the world, referring to Lord of this world, referring to Hasatan in the Hebrew, referring to Satan, referring to the evil and the division in the world. We use the word world a little bit differently these days. But division still exists, and the accuser is still at work. And I have this little shopping list of things that divide us. Disability, ability, mental health, appearance, wealth, poverty, skin, race, sports teams, homelessness, the language we speak, gender, age and generation, pop culture, politics, religion, denominations within religion, our nationality and heritage, education, I could probably fill the entire book that this piece of paper came out of with things that divide us. We as followers of Jesus Christ, we aren't defined by the world. We aren't defined by what divides us. We are children of God. And we are followers of Jesus Christ as in our, our motto, for the sake of the world. And I, I just finished writing a paper that was, uh, oh, bless the professor, she gave me an extension on it. Um, it was on Anselm of Canterbury, and he said a lot of smart things, really smart fellow. And I have a theory that, that those cats, they were a lot smarter than we were because they weren't as distracted as we are, maybe. I don't know, but I, I digress. He said that God is that which no greater can be conceived. So the biggest, most magnanimous, glorious, wonderful thing that you can think of, well, God's, God's bigger than that, right? And God's love is also bigger than anything that we can conceive. These things that divide us, we know where they come from. And not to minimize them, not to say that disability, ability, our language, helping the homeless, um, that all the race, gender, not to say that those things are important and not to minimize them, to give them their full value, but understand that God's love supersedes all of that and can join us all together if we do what the greatest commandment from Jesus Christ is telling us to do, to love God with all of ourselves and to love each other. Each other. No matter what. Tough love, good love, hard love, we have to be open to receiving it as well. And that can be tough. That can be really, really tough. Sometimes our own I'll, you hear this word a lot from, from folks wearing these things. Our own brokenness can really drag us down and eat us alive on the inside. But know that Christ has redeemed us and we are forgiven. And that's the voice of the accuser perhaps saying that I'm not good enough or I'm not gonna point at anybody in particular. You're not good enough is that voice that can creep into our head. And that is the, the voice of the accuser. But we are united in forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Because man, I've made some real doozies of, of, of bad choices in my life. 
Thanks be to God that I'm forgiven. Thanks be to God that you are forgiven. And we are charged with the greatest commandment to love one another and love God. There are things that are in this world that this love, dare I say, combats, squashes. Deception and lies. Hatred and death. Deception and lies. Hatred and death. Is defeated by truth, love, and life. Living in God's truth. Loving with God's love. And the life given of Jesus Christ for our redemption. He conquered death, squashed it. He's the way, the truth, and the light. Love rhymes with life, doesn't it? So as we combat this division, this division from the empty set, from the accuser trying to keep us from loving each other, trying to keep us from our relationship with God, from the union of God's infinite and eternal love, greater than we can imagine. We can step forward into a situation with God's love. Sometimes in a situation, we can step back and allow space for God's love to water that garden. Funny thing, I preached last night and uh, I had to actually do air symbols for the wonderful sermon title because um, we, weren't, we don't use screens or anything on Saturday night. But there was something as I was sitting in that chair and Lori was playing the organ beautifully and we were singing hymns of praise. I saw in the back of this bouquet I'm not gonna pull it out because it's not mine to do with. It says, and you can only see it from that chair over there. It says, please water me daily. <laughs> so will you all join me in watering, letting the Holy Spirit really cultivate love, God's love, God's salvation, God's truth in this wacky world of ours. Amen.
No, it's okay. All good. No, you did great. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> uh, so we've been in this call process for one year, and we've had the same call committee the whole time. They've been very dedicated. Uh, and again, it's up to the congregation. The congregation calls the pastor. Uh, so we're lucky that she is a seminary student and that she just graduated because we can actually say her name and get it out there before. Usually, if the pastor's at another congregation, you have to be all secret and say, come see the secret unknown candidate. And then everybody's wondering who it is. So it's great. So she'll be here the June 3rd Thank and you, 4th. Jeremy. Again, just like Josh said before and after services, but the most important thing is to show up and, and, and be here to vote on June 4th at 1230. If we don't have a quorum and don't vote, then we can't extend a call and she cannot accept it. So please do that. I'm very excited. I think she's going to bring a wonderful energy uh, into it. I'll be excited that I won't be the young pastor anymore. So that's great. Uh, so again, I can't say more. We, we spent all this time uh, talking with her, interviewing her, and we do think she's a great fit, but you guys have the final say. I do want to say thank you to the call committee. Uh, we have several of them here. I'm going to announce them, and then we can give them a round of applause, but the, the, there are co-chairs, which was um, Ray Harris, uh, who was an 11 o'clock worshiper. Karen Jamison was also uh, part of the call committee, is part of the call committee, and she worships at different uh, places and times, depending on, uh, on what she has going on. Our other co-chair is, is John Woodier. John, please stand up. No, don't clap yet. No, wait, wait. We got a whole bunch of people. Stay standing. All right. We'll clap at the end so we don't have to worry about this. Uh, Allison Elk, please stand up. Uh, don't clap, Dieter. What did I tell you? <laughs> Stop clapping. Dieter was on the call committee and his wife, and his wife did a great job. So... Uh, <laughs> Who else? Who else I'm missing? Yeah. Hannah. Hannah Jones is our youth representative. All right. Is that all of them? I think that's all of them that go to the service. So let's thank them for all their hard work. Thank you. <laughs> Dieter did a good job, too. He did a good job. Too. All, right. all right. Let's all stand to receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.